problems of the psyche without being able to rely on tested rules of procedure or on a series of verifiable experiments and logically explicable facts are perhaps the most baffling and unapproachable phenomena with which the scientific mind has ever had to deal. In psychological matters, the question, why does it happen, is not necessarily more productive of results than the other question, to what purpose does it happen, because all psychic phenomena are not always causally dependent. Among the many puzzles of medical psychology, there is one problem child, the dream. The dream is a fragment of involuntary psychic activity just conscious enough to be reproducible in the waking state. While awake, we cogitate about what we are perceiving by sense perception, but it is not by sense perception at any rate that we perceive a dream. That being so, sometimes certain dreams can be traced back to stomach trouble or sleeping on one's back or the like. Such results can also occur when organs are affected for it is like what happens with bodies in motion. Hence, that can make it come about in perceiving since actual perception is a sort of alteration. That is why the affection exists in sense organs not only while they are perceiving, but also when they have ceased to do so, both in the depths and on the surfaces, like if, after looking at the sun or some other bright object, we shut our eyes. Then, if we watch closely, it appears directly aligned with what our line of sight happens to be. Of all psychic phenomena, the dream presents perhaps the largest number of irrational factors. When not cogitating upon an object with sense perception, it is neither by common beliefs that we perceive a dream. For we do not say merely that the thing which is approaching is a human being or a horse, but also that it is white or beautiful, but about these things belief could not say anything either truly or falsely without sense perception. During sleep, however, the soul under the threshold of the unconscious does this, for we believe that we see that the approaching object is a human being, and likewise that it is white. Hence, it seems to possess a minimum of that logical coherence and that hierarchy of values shown by the other contents of consciousness, and is therefore less transparent and understandable. Usually a dream is strange and disconcerting product distinguished by many bad qualities, such as lack of logic, questionable morality, uncouth form, and apparent absurdity or nonsense. People are therefore only too glad to dismiss it as stupid, meaningless, and worthless. However, dreams only have logic with distorted objects as their content. For the presentation of the language of the soul does not depend on conventional beliefs about signs. Many of the signs that appear in dreams can only be interpreted by applying very private and personal meanings of the signs in an abstract sense. Every interpretation of a dream is a psychological statement about certain of its contents. This is not without danger as the dreamer, like most people, usually displays an astonishing sensitiveness to critical remarks, not only if they are wrong, but even more if they are right. Since it is not possible, except under very special conditions, to work out the meaning of a dream without the collaboration of the dreamer, an extraordinary amount of tact is required not to violate his self-respect unnecessarily. The words composing a dream narrative have not just one meaning. If, for instance, someone dreams of a table, we are still far from knowing what the table of the dreamer signifies, although the word table sound unambiguous enough. For the thing we do not know is that this table is the very one at which his father sat when he refused the dreamer all further financial help and threw him out of the house as a good-for-nothing. The polished surface of this table stares at him as a symbol of his lamentable worthlessness in his daytime consciousness, as well as in his dreams at night. This is what the dreamer understands by table. Therefore, we need the dreamer's help in order to limit the multiple meanings of words to those that are essential and convincing. That the table stands as a mortifying landmark in the dreamer's life may be doubted by anyone who was not present. Clearly. Dream interpretation is in the first place an experience which has immediate validity for only two persons. If therefore we establish that the table in the dream means just that fatal table with all that this implies, then although we have not explained the dream we have at least interpreted one important motif of it, that is, we have recognized the subjective content in which the word table is embedded.